I don't want to waste your time. So let's get started. Oh, so you don't have to like the video just yet. You can watch to the end of the video and make up your mind then, or halfway through the video, or whenever you please. Thank you. Juan Ramon Sainz was a host on a Mexican horror podcast called La Mano Peluda, which translates to The Hairy Hand, which gained popularity because of his guest demonic experiences. But what he didn't know is that one of his guests was in contact with the devil and will soon end his life. Let's start from the beginning, the Josue Velasquez case. In 2002, Juan Ramon receives a call during his podcast. It was by a man named Josue Velasquez. What he told Juan Ramon terrified 15 million listeners. Josue told Juan Ramon Saenz that when he was 16, he made a pact with the devil in exchange for money and economic power. But with every bit of money or power he gained, he experienced grave consequences. Josue was born in Mexico but decided to move to California with his family to start a better life, get better jobs, and better futures for his siblings since he was the oldest. From what seemed an American dream turned out to be a financial crisis. They weren't making enough money to pay their bills nor buy food. As all of this was going on, Josue felt responsible. He got desperate. He soon started getting hold of demonic books, practicing dark magic, all for him to sell his soul for his family. It was an incident, Josue said. He claimed that it took him over five years for him to get in contact with the demon who could grant him his wishes. One day, as he was practicing dark magic in his own house, he saw a tall, skinny man with dark hair. Josue asked him who he was and what he was doing in his house. The tall, skinny man replied with a calm, gentle voice. Didn't you want to see me after all these years? I'm Satan. Josue claimed that he was confused. He was expecting what we all think the devil would look like. Red skin, horns, goat feet. He wasn't expecting an normal looking guy. That was one of many encounters with a demon, but surely wasn't the last. Another encounter he had with a demon was in the middle of the night. He claimed that his mom was unconscious in her bed. And there was an entity standing on top of her. And that entity was in form of a pig. And this pig ends up being the one that helps him. The pig told him to follow him. And Jose weirdly claims that they ended up flying to a cave in the middle of nowhere. He had to stay in that cave for 21 days so he could be prepared for the ceremony. After the 21 days, they show him a ring that could help him talk to other demons who could grant him money and power. But the only way he'd get that ring is if he sacrifices somebody from his own family. Josue being desperate starts debating on who shall it be. My mother? No, I love her so much. My siblings? No, that's the whole reason I'm doing this. Then I thought of my grandma. She's old. She already lived her life. So then they told me how to do it, and I killed her. I shouldn't say it like that, it hurts, because the good has come to me. Strangely, when my grandma was found dead, she lived alone, but she didn't have any wounds or marks on her. It surprised me a lot because I did a bunch of things for her. Yikes. Dije, mi madre, pues no la quiero mucho. Sí. Mis hermanos, pues no, porque por eso lo estoy haciendo. Y pensé en mi abuela. Te dije, sí, ya está grande, ya. Ya vivió, ya. Ya. Perdón. Eh, Entonces, este, me indicaron cómo tenía yo que hacer todo eso, eh, y a mi abuela la maté. Eh, bueno, no, no debo decirlo así. Me, me duele porque el arrepentimiento me ha llegado. Eh, extrañamente, cuando mi abuela se encontró muerta, ella vivía sola, eh, estuvo sin ninguna marca. A mí me sorprendió muchísimo porque yo le hice un montón de cosas. So Josue went to her house and ended up drugging her with her moza hide. And basically ended up doing a lot of cutting in her body and then taking her out. It wasn't specific in all the stuff he did but we could assume it wasn't pleasant. But her cause of death was natural cause. Since there was no wounds or marks on her body. She finally received the ring and wanted to attend to school. And he ended up applying to a college and he got accepted the first interview he did. He also finished his studies in six months. And after he was finished with school, he started his own company. And it was a success. He was making around $15,000 a day. But there was a cash to this. He had to spend every single penny every day. And he wasn't allowed to donate or give the money he made. I don't know how this works out since the whole reason for this was so he could give the money to his family. But at the end of the day, he can't give out the money he made from this. One day when he was at a construction site, a construction worker was venting out how his family was in financial crisis and how he can't afford to maintain his family. Josue felt bad for him and wanted to do something for that family, so he gave the man some of his money 
thinking it wasn't a big deal. It's just money. Later that day, he went back to his house and he saw an old lady with dark hair in his house. She said that she came to punish him for breaking the deal they made with the money. Josue claimed that the old lady was very pale with a big mouth and a big tongue. He also claimed that she would attack him and go on top of him harassing him, saying that he would pay for what he did. As Jose was explaining this story, he sounded scared as if this lady had never left and was always in his shadows. You can hear it in this next clip. Some person, le digo, me hace, oh, oh, por Dios. Damn. Oh, shit, es que hace muchas cosas y estoy un poco alterado. Fíjese que eso me está pasando algo muy raro, señor. Sí. He presenciado cosas y he visto cosas de las que no me, ate, no, no me he atemorizado. Sí. Y sin embargo, en ese momento que estoy platicando con ustedes sí. y, y es esta persona aquí, eh, es una sensación verdaderamente como nunca lo había eh, eh, sentido. Sí, tranquilo. Este, eh, escucho que me está gritando, escucho que me está gritando. Yo, yo tengo otro nombre que no, 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 no les daré en esta ocasión. Claro. Eh, un nombre real, eh, o, o sea, uh, un, un, tengo, uh, oh, se es, es, están escuchando, por ejemplo, muy... Jose Rosa tried ending it by taking the ring off, but every time he attempted, he claimed that the ring would just get tighter and tighter, fracturing his finger. Now back to Juan Ramón, the host. He tried helping him by getting a priest to pray with Josué, but you can hear in the podcast how it, when he tried to pray, he would be interrupted or harassed by the demons. No prestes atención a esas voces en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Josué, en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Cristo Jesús es mayor. Cristo Jesús te ama. Cristo Jesús te quiere limpiar y liberar. Cristo Jesús es mayor y quiere hacerlo. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. En Cristo Jesús. No pierdes, no prestes atención, no prestes atención, no prestes atención. No, es que Dios mío, yo, 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 no, yo no escucho nada, yo no escucho nada. No escuchas no, nada. No escucho nada. Pero en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo, en este momento declárate, yo pertenezco a Cristo. Declárate, yo pertenezco a Cristo. ¿Qué me están hablando, güey? Yo pertenezco a Cristo. Yo pertenezco a Cristo. Vas a empezar a tomar esto. Ponte... Ponte el casco de la salvación. Ponte el casco de la salvación. And while this was going on, it wasn't just for Josué. Juan Ramón the host was also experiencing stuff going around during this call. As the equipment was moving, cold breeze coming out of nowhere, and lights flickering. And the praying part was just the last segment of the podcast, so they wished Josué good luck and they said the goodbyes to each other. Since Juan Ramón the host also has to interview other people, and that was the last time they spoke until nine years later. When Juan Ramón the host got another job to be another host on a TV show called Extra Normal. And he wanted some ideas for one of his episodes and fans were wondering what happened to the Josué Velázquez case. So Juan Ramón the host got in contact with Josué and asked him if he wanted to be a guest again on his new show. Josué agreed and took the offer but in one condition, that it has to be in a boat in the middle of the water. Since he thinks this is the only way where the demons won't bother him or get in the way. They both end up in an agreement and meet up and do the interview. Juan Ramón the host wasn't alone. He had a partner, a co-host, who helped him. But during the interview, you can tell that Juan Ramón the host wasn't at 100%. He looked uncomfortable and distracted and kept holding his hand like if it was in pain. His co-host also came out and talked that Juan Ramón the host was acting strange that day. Juan mostraba todo este respeto y... Y eso, digo, lo, lo proyectaba, insisto, físicamente, y lo noté un poco ansioso, como que empezaba ya a manotear un poquito más intranquilo. Va como un perro rabioso queriendo hacer cosas, entonces se ata para que no pueda ya hacer más daño, sobre todo para poder tener esta entrevista sin ningún problema. Y es que cuando me reúno con Juan Ramón, eh, generamos, eh, fusionamos cosas. A week after the interview, Juan Ramón the host ends up passing away. In the week after, the priest who was on the phone with Josué also passed away. Between these two weeks, the cameraman was hospitalized over a hernia he never had before, and the co-host got in a car accident that almost ended his life. People called out how Josué was wearing a glove over the ring and shook people's hands, but he took the glove off to shake the cameraman and Juan Ramón the host and his co-host. Uno de nuestros compañeros, Mario Estrada, tuvo un accidente automovilístico muy fuerte. 
me fui a descansar y cuando yo iba ya hacia mi casa, iba manejando normal, tranquilo, las calles prácticamente vacías, porque pues a, a, después de la medianoche no hay mucho tráfico como en cualquier ciudad. Y de pronto sale un, un carro este, detrás de mí, pero se me cierra muy bruscamente, pero no vi ningún carro que, que estuviera cercano. Y de pronto salió y, y me descontroló porque se me cerró. Could this story be a hoax or could it be real? Me, personally, I'm stuck between the two. I'm religious, I believe in God and Jesus Christ. But I also believe that there's evil when there's good. I never seen a ghost in my life. My dad also has a story when he was in Mexico. It was a very hot day, one of the hottest days that year. And he was in a car. He looked to his right, and there was a lady gasping for air due to the heat. And he looked away, but when he looked back, she saw a pig gasping for air. He said it was the devil. I don't remember the story that much, neither does he. But it reminds me of the pig demon from Josue. But that's it for the video. See you next time. Or not. <laughs>